The doctor is in. Hi guys, it's Dr. Sal from DrSecrets.com. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to take a look at skin punch biopsies and how I do them. The skin punch biopsy is a very effective, very simple, very quick procedure for removing skin blemishes, moles, uh, beauty marks, birthmarks, ugly marks, whatever you want to call them. So in this episode, I'm going to illustrate to you how I use um, punch biopsies to remove these uh, cosmetic blemishes uh, for my patients. So I'm going to do it. Uh, let's just jump down here to the anatomy board. And um, I'm going to do it using a stock photo here of this image of this uh, gentleman here. And we're going to pretend that he's coming into my office for removal of this mole on his uh, sideburn or cheek. Um, he complains that it makes him look like Two-Face and um, it's a real conversation killer when he's uh, speed dating on weekends. So we're going to take it out for him. So we discuss uh, different options and we settle on the agreement that we're going to use a punch biopsy uh, technique to remove it uh, because it's so simple, swift and, uh, and um, effective. So um, I book him in and uh, today's showtime. And um, the first thing we do is we're going to sterilize the skin uh, using surgical alcohol. The purpose for that is um, to remove any opportunistic bacteria on the skin. They're always there waiting to cause infection. So um, alcohol for probably at least the last century has been um, our method of combating these uh, bacteria from causing wound infections um, in the surgical site. <clears throat> so after application of the alcohol, the next step in the punch biopsy process is to freeze the skin. Obviously, we don't want uh, people writhing in agony as we're trying to use sharp tools um, to remove these lesions. My preference is to use um, an injection of uh, xylocaine impregnated with uh, adrenaline or, or uh, norepinephrine. And the reason for that is uh, very simple. Um, when the adrenaline uh, gets under the skin, it blanches the skin, makes it look pale. Uh, so that has two purposes. One is that it lets me know when it's time to cut. And two, because I, I know that the um, anesthetic has taken effect. And the second purpose is um, by blanching the skin, it also reduces blood loss when I begin to make my incisions and cut. So in this little illustration here, we have um, my anesthetic in this uh, syringe here. And how I apply it is under the skin, and I use a, a four-sided quadrant, like a square. So I go in, at, or I say the needle is here, I go in one side, then I go into the tail tract of that end, go down, then across, and then up again. So that gives me a, a field plot of um, numb skin where I can uh, do, do my business. All right, so after the freezing, um, before I actually begin any cutting, I'll take a scissors and I use the sharp end and I'll dab the face around the site. And um, if the patient reports to me that they feel some pressure, but nothing like a needle, no pain, then I know it's showtime. So the next step is um, we'll actually do the punch biopsy. Now, this is a graphic here of what a punch biopsy looks like. This is an, an actual real one that I'll show you here. Bonafide. This is an eight millimeter uh, sample. Is that upside down? Uh, no, that's actually correct. Uh, eight millimeter punch biopsy. As you can s appreciate here, it has on its tip a very sharp uh, circular saw or razor blade. And on the other end, on the opposing end, there's a handle for me to actuate it. So I'll take it out of its uh, sterile case. In the real operating room, I wouldn't be uh, bare-handed. I'd, I'd be sterile with wearing uh, surgical gloves. But this is just for illustration purposes here. So here we have it. You can see it up close there. Very sharp on the tip. In fact, I have to be careful during this demonstration that I don't cut myself because I'll bleed like a pig. All right, um, so here we have it. And um, what I'm gonna do is illustrate with with this apple here, imagining this is the blemish here, that black dot, and uh, this is our punch biopsy apparatus here. 
Uh, the use of it is very simple. You basically apply it over the area, trying to encompass the entire lesion under the blade. So you apply it, then you press. See that? Just pressed in. Then twist. And then pop. Now, I don't know if you can see that there, but there's a very fine, faint line there of uh, separation of the apple. I'm going to use this uh, peering knife here to show you the sample as it comes out. See how neat and perfect that came out there? Now in real life, instead of a peering knife, I would use a forceps to grab, to grab this offending piece and uh, pull it out from the surrounding skin. And just like in the real apple, it's still going to be connected under its underside to the, the structures beneath. So then I use a surgical scissors and just snip it away. So here's our sample here. Then with the real sample, which would be obviously comprised of skin, I would then drop that into a specimen bottle with some kind of a preservative um, like formaldehyde or whatever is in your area and send that off then to the lab. At the lab, a pathologist then receives it, cuts it into minute fine pieces and looks at it under a microscope to look at the cellular architecture and within a week sends me back a report of um, either confirming or disconfirming what, my, what the diagnosis is. In this case here, this uh, gentleman thinks he has a mole, but in reality, it's actually a seabrick keratosis. But whatever, he wants it gone, so we agreed. All right, um, so we've completed the punch biopsy, so you understand now why it's called a punch, because you literally punch it in through the skin, and then pop. So let me just illustrate here. So this is um, showing a graphical illustration of pretty much how it would look um, after the after the um, core is removed so here on our apple sample you see it leaves a in real life it's actually a much smoother hole because the skin is a lot more uh, turgid than this apple um, skin mm. Mm, this apple is actually pretty good so um, so there we have the exposed um, wound here so typically you'll see a little bit of blood coming out the reason it's not torrential is because of the adrenaline that I used in the needle when I was going in. Um, and I've already explained to you how then I would take that entire core out, just like that apple core there, and uh, send that off to the lab. So that's pretty self-explanatory at this point. So after this point, then we're going to close it up. Whoops. Uh, so there's still... So I close it um, using ethylon uh, suture. Uh, most of the time, uh, depending on the size of the biopsy, I can use anywhere from a size 3.0, as you can see here illustrated, which is a fairly uh, fat nylon, all the way down to a 4 or 5.0, which is very, very faint and, and fine. I usually don't like using really, really fine um, thread, however, because I find it pulls out through the skin. The fatter uh, string tends to hold it together better. And um, when I'm doing it, let me see if I could give you a graphical representation here. So here's a, here's a graphical representation of the done deed. So it leaves a little, um, a little incision mark when I'm finished. And I usually use three of the ethylon sutures, even though I could get by with two. And the reason for that is um, I like the redundancy of having one extra suture in case something goes wrong in the wound pops by having two by having one extra one it leads to the wound still being able to heal um, nicely opposed without just gaping when it gapes it leaves a bigger scar which um, I don't find elegant and I dislike so that's why I go to the trouble of adding a, an extra suture when I'm doing the procedure all right so that ladies and gentlemen is um, how to do a skin punch biopsy if you're me that's my technique of doing it and um, the whole purpose is to convert this to this. Voila. Oh, yeah! So that is the skin punch biopsy technique in a nutshell. Thank you for watching. And uh, don't, for, don't forget to subscribe so that I can keep you updated as I um, upload new videos. And I wish you to stay well, stay warm. And um, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now.